New this morning in a WBOC News This Morning exclusive, a Cambridge, Maryland man is detailing his time in China at the moment as the deadly coronavirus continues to spread throughout China as well as the world. Now, there are a, a lot of questions about the circumstances about this. Now, Kim, Rick, uh, Rick Hinkle says that Chinese citizens throughout the country are concerned. Jimmy, Rick is about six hours away from Wuhan, which is the city where officials believe the outbreak originated. And he says life has changed. Rick and his wife are over there for the Chinese New Year, but not many places in the area are even open at the moment. The Chinese citizens have joined together and are staying at home. Businesses are still closed. They've been closed for a week. People have not been to any restaurants. Everything's closed. Rick says grocery stores and pharmacies are the only stores open at the moment. He adds that the government is making sure people are not gathering in crowds as the virus would continue to spread. Most of his days are spent inside with family. Life is different everywhere in China right now. The people entertain themselves. Just imagine if we lived without going outside. The people play, we play cards, we play a lot of cards, they play mahjong. New this morning out of Kent County, nearly two dozen people, including a Dover Post reporter, arrested last night in Camden during a protest that began in Dover. Protests in the city have been going on for about a week and a half now, following the death of George Floyd. Most protests remain peaceful. Last night's protests began in Dover. State police say there were about 40 protesters there. According to state police, protesters began blocking traffic along Route 13 just after 6:15. State police say law enforcement officers asked protesters to move to the shoulder of the road, saying the protests became unlawful when they were blocking traffic. Police say people became, quote, disorderly. During a Facebook Live on the Dover Post Facebook page, journalist Andre Lamar was recording and attempting to explain the situation as he was arrested by police. He identified himself to police as part of the press several times. Lamar was released hours later. He was not charged. Several hours later, in a press release, Delaware State Police say protesters were arrested for being in the way of traffic. After his release, Lamar went back on Facebook Live as dozens of people stood outside the Troop 3 headquarters. Guys, like, this is so real. Like, this isn't a joke. This isn't something that's happening in another state. Like, this is happening here. Lawyers did show up, according to the Facebook Live. A 17-year-old protester, Samaya Ortiz, was arrested. She was also released hours later and not charged. She was emotional discussing the arrest. When they loosened her cuffs, I asked them, could you please loosen mine because I have whelps on my wrist. And I said, these are too tight and it's very painful. And they ignored me and put me in the car anyway. And the whole time we were in the car, they were like, we just want you to know that we support your cause. Like personally, we support your cause, but we can't, you guys can't be on the road. Black Lives Matter! Chants of Black Lives Matter began again outside of Truth 3 last night. State police are still investigating the situation. Governor John Carney tweeted, quote, reporters have a fundamental right to cover the demonstrations we're seeing in Delaware and across the country. They should not be arrested for doing their jobs. That's not acceptable, end quote. Matt Marshall, the spokesman for Attorney General Kathleen Jennings, said, quote, people have a right to free speech and to peaceable assembly in this country and our goal, regardless of their message or their ideology, is to ensure that they can exercise that right safely, period, end quote. Delaware State Police, again, are investigating last night's events. You could take over for a couple seconds so I yeah, can just course, uh, do a course. little bit of research on another computer. So for our viewers who are just joining us, we know that you might have gotten woken up by a tornado warning. Watch something on your phone. And that can be a little alarming. So we are here to help you through this. We received tornado warnings in Sussex County first about five minutes before the newscast was supposed to start at 5 a.m. And then it has expanded to tornado warnings in Wicomico County. Again, folks, this is just the start of what's going to be six hours of rain, wind. Again, the threat of the possibility of a few isolated tornadoes not out of the question today with these storms. And as Kim said, a viewer talked about that it's starting to pick up, the winds are starting to pick up in Berlin. So we are expecting those wind dusts to only get stronger now. Mm -hmm. 
But I just want to go back and give you guys an idea of what we saw while we were there. We started from Cambridge, made our way down to that main street when we heard there was that suspected tornado. As we got there, and you might see that from the video we sent to you guys, uh, we saw a home literally lifted off of its foundation. There's that home right there, Amy. We're taking a look at it. All over. This morning, we are honoring veterans across America and here on Delmarva as we celebrate Veterans Day. Of course, everyone here at WBOC is thankful for every single person who has risked their lives to allow us the freedoms we use every day. However, just because there is a National Day honoring veterans, that doesn't mean they lead an easy life. Did you know that veterans make up roughly 11% of the adult homeless population? The National Coalition for Homeless Veterans reports there are more than 40,000 veterans living without homes on any given night in America. According to the RAND Center for Military Health Policy Research, in 2008, close to one-fifth of veterans who served in Iraq or Afghanistan came home with either major depression or post-traumatic stress disorder. And according to Veteran Affairs, in 2017, veterans accounted for 13.5% of all deaths by suicide among U.S. adults. That's more than 6,100 veterans who died by suicide that year. A major concern over the past year because of COVID-19 is isolation. Being alone has been shown to be a risk factor for suicide. Veterans who died by suicide were also more likely to have sleep disorders, traumatic brain injury, or a pain diagnosis. In 2017, an average of nearly 17 veterans died by suicide every day, according to Veterans Affairs. Now, while these are harsh realities and every person's path is different, there is hope. The National Suicide Prevention phone number is 1-800-273-8255. It's a 24-hour service, just like the Veterans Crisis Line. Same number, you just press one. You can also chat with the Veterans Line. You just text 8382-55. And beginning at sunrise yesterday, veterans and supporters have been walking 100 miles from Myrtle Beach to Charleston. Each step, a step towards creating awareness. Organizer Paul Yurkin says veterans suffer in silence. Every single day we try to be strong, but just know that veterans are struggling every single day and they hide it very well. They have a face on, it's a mask, and sometimes they look happy, but inside they're struggling. Another winter warning here on Del Mar, but possibly bringing some slippery conditions on the road. WBOC's Cassie Simeon joining us from Dover this morning. Cassie, good morning. Snow still coming down and sticking to some side roads as well. Good morning, Bill. Well, we're seeing those big flakes almost turn into that freezing sleet that we can. I don't know if you guys can hear it on my microphone, but it's actually hitting my coat and bouncing off of me. But so far, Bill, easy going on the morning commute. Just take your time and make sure you stick to more of those main roads over the side roads this morning. Cassie, thank you very much. Please stay warm. Turning now to Jimmy Hoppe, some businesses, they're thankful for this winter weather on Del Marva. Hey, Bill, 29 days away from spring. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. I'm Steve Hammond. And I'm Madeline Overturf. Tonight, you join us one year into the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, one year later, Maddie, and more than a half million Americans dead. Tonight, we will dive into how this invisible virus has forever changed our lives here on Delmarva. We have seen businesses and their employees alter their work as state and local guidelines change. And we've watched frontline workers take on fights they never thought they'd have to go through. Yet, that fight is still not over. Absolutely, Steve. The battle against against COVID-19 rages on. Things are improving, but there are still plenty of people on Delmarva who are infected or hospitalized with COVID. At 6.48 today, final day of 2020. It is a year that will be remembered for grief and pain, but it doesn't mean we didn't share a few smiles, maybe some laughter together. We'd like to share some of our favorite stories from the year with you this morning. It was early, early June. Protests were happening throughout the nation following the death of George Floyd. While there was lots of tension, there was also a sense of peace found in many neighborhoods. In Minneapolis, David Martello placed a piano in the middle of a street during one of those protests. The unexpected gesture brought the community together. People of all races came together, playing anything they could, whether it was classical music or something as simple as happy birthday. It was back in June, four people. They were swimming in the Murder Kill River when strong tides suddenly swept through. 
Two brothers, unfortunately, passing away due to those dangerous waves. However, two people were saved by a South Bowers firefighter and his friend, who both just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Mike Hynett, Timothy Smith, they were honored for their life-saving measures as they jumped in the water to help, knowing the risks that were in play. And one of the moments making an impact in 2021 is the announcement of the COVID-19 vaccine. After a year of the deadly virus first popping up in China, the United States is now pushing out millions of doses of that vaccine with the hopes of getting things back in order. It's an exciting moment when that vaccine was announced for everyone across the world. From everyone here on WBOC News this morning, thank you for trusting us this year. We know it was difficult. We thank you for your patience as we still continue to learn how to work and live in this very different life and world. We hope we help we bring some smiles to you as you woke up. It can only get better from here, right?